All right, <clears throat> I have an iPad Air 3 here with no backlight, and the thing about all these iPads, most of these iPads, is that the backlight systems are just about the same for all of them. So I haven't even tested it with a screen yet, but uh, I just test uh, the backlight system just to make sure that there is something wrong with the backlight system. Then I just replace it, and then I can test it after that. So looking under this uh, cover right, this plus this uh, cover right here, adhesive. It doesn't look like anything's burnt or anything like that. Um, and I don't know exactly where the backlight filter is, but I suspect it's probably that and that. That's probably my guess, but I'm not positive. And maybe that's a touch filter or something like that. Maybe that's another touch filter. And that's probably... I don't know what that is. But those are my guesses, okay? So those filters look fine. And then you come over here and... The backlight system on these iPads usually have two diodes, or yeah, two diodes, two coils, and um, an IC somewhere. So I don't know exactly where it is, but this looks like the backlight diodes right here. Where is the IC? Yeah, I don't know where the backlight IC is. Maybe it's under here somewhere. I'm not really sure. Anyways, anyways, um, so checking diode mode on these two diodes. One side is 0.33, and the other side is 0.33, and uh, 0.33 and 0.33. So that should not be the case. Diodes should not have the same diode mode reading on both sides. It should be um. Uh, there should be a voltage drop across it of somewhere between point three to point let's see point three to point seven I mean that's that's about standard on iPhones uh, and if you look at this right here point three to point seven volts if you look at this diode right here you can see it's cracked actually if you look really closely you can see it's cracked I don't know if you can see that or not but it is cracked so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna replace these two diodes and if I just kind of wiggle it a little bit you can kind of already see that it's already like moving you know what I'm saying so I think if I lifted this it'd probably be, it'd probably be cracked so I'm gonna put a little flux on it remove these things and replace them and the good thing is that these diodes all well, these diodes are the same uh, in terms of the iPad Air 1, Air 2, 5th, 6th and 7th generations and I think even the iPad Pros you can use the same diodes for them they're like 40 what is it like 40 amp or I'm sorry 40 volt 1 amp diodes and if you if you want to figure out what they are, there there's a link on uh, microsoldering.com for them. Uh, but just remember that um, diodes are have polarities to them, so um, they're directional. So you just want to make sure that the lines go to the right side based on um, the direction that I'm facing right now. Okay, so just remember that. So I'm just going to remove these two diodes. And let's just clean these this up a little bit. I don't want that much um, solder on them, and that should not be bridged. So I need to fix that. Uh, I never really want to bridge stuff because then it'll just freaking take forever longer to fix it. All right, I think that's good. I don't, I'm not even sure. It looks like it might be still bridged, but I'm not positive. Anyways. Uh, okay, I'll, I'm going to put the diodes on first, and then I'll test them after that. Okay. Got plenty of diodes here. Three. Alright, so my diodes, one, two... And we're just gonna do this. I'm not using my tweezers because my tweezers are I don't think they're like uh they have enough uh width to them to like produce a good solder joint, so see like that is just a waste of time right there. Second time I've done that.
it's better if you don't do this because it's not like the easiest trying to wick these things clean. I think that's good. Okay, so let's just be a little more careful this time. So let's see, let's just bend angle it this way. Right, not a lot to it. And then we'll just do this side and then we'll turn the iPad around and do the other side. Not a whole lot to it, my friend. Okay. So that's good. We'll turn the iPad around. Oh yeah, make sure you isolate the battery before you do anything, otherwise there's going to be voltage going across it and you're going to cause some other issues. See, it looks like that's actually still bridged, so that's not good. Anyways, so I can fix that. There's probably touching anyways it's my guess okay I think that's fine now I think I mean I think they're probably the same like either they're not ground but they're probably yeah so those are already those are supposed to be touching anyway so it's not a big deal if they're bridged I guess but you never really want it bridged anyways let's dive mode both sides again now we're getting 0 0.45 and 0.33 0.33 and 0.45. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. So, let's just get a little isopropyl alcohol, clean this sucker up. And we will uh, reassemble and test, hopefully. Just in case you were wondering, this is kind of how I isolate my uh, my battery connectors. But I'm actually going to stick this plastic thing on there because I need to put the screen back on to test it. So I can do this where you guys can still see it somehow. Well, it's not going to be very easy. You know what? Screw it. You guys will have to deal with it. All right. After, so make sure you isolate the battery. Uh, take out the tab once you have the screen reinstalled. Plastic tab. And I just do a little cutout um, from a plastic playing card because you need something really, really, really thin. Let's see, what am I doing here? No idea. That's not it. All right, reconnected. Let's plug in my lightning cable if I have any more left. Okay, I have one more left. Let's just make sure it's getting the correct power. I'm getting zero amps on this for some reason. The hell? That's not good. What am I getting zero? Uh, weird. Oh, oh okay, no, I'm sorry, sorry. Hold on a second. This is not plugged into my other charger. So I'm getting point... F okay, there he goes. This is not part... <laughs> this uh, lightning jack is not plugged into my main... Um, ammeter here plugged into to another one so it's drawing about 0.93 amps now 
and Apple logo's on. Okay, let's type in the passcode. Ugh, come on, man. Okay. Alright, as you can see, this is working well. Uh, backlight is on, so that is how you repair the iPad Air 3 backlight. Uh, usually it's the diodes. Um, sometimes it's the filter, but... I rarely ever seen a bl uh, see a blown filter on these things. It's almost always the diode. Um, okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at udemy.com um, if you go directly to udemy it's 150 bucks if you go through microsoldering.com click on store shop and then click on this first uh, product right here there's a coupon code that uh, gives you fifty dollars off of our online course so our online course it was created by Tom and myself um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of, how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff and then we go into actual repairs so the four most common problems are no backlight no touch no charge and loop disease and with the newer versions of the iPhones um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up uh, the logic boards come in two pieces so we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together and then our last section is um, all about data recovery so this is it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started okay and with the way that cell phone repair is going these days I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business um, if you're interested like I said just go to the website here microsoldering.com and click on uh, store shop and then click on this right here and you'll get fifty dollars off so thank you for watching our channel and hopefully you'll enjoy the course thank you